getting this first row fed. It's really yellow and lacking minerals and vitamins. The oak mulch topping is pooling nitrogen from the plants. And so they're really yellow right now. They're not even really like a dark green. They're very small. And so I'm getting them fed now with some of the biostimulant. Just to show what happens in about a week from feeding. The reason why this row is so yellow compared to the other rows is because this is the last row that was made. And the oak mulch that's underneath here, there's two feet of oak mulch that raise the soil up. And so the oak mulch that's under here is the youngest. You see there's some patches of dark and then light and then really sparse and then it comes in. And so this is the youngest space, the youngest row, because we have been filling out the property over the last two years. <clears throat> and you can see that the other rows are a lot better. There's a lot more growth and green greenery. It's a lot darker on the other rows. And they're a lot healthier and darker and fuller. That's because this mulch over here was first laid two years ago. It's like this row is really good. And then it gets younger and younger and younger as the field progresses. And that's just because we, we had oak mulch dumped over the course of two years. And as it's gone over here, I flattened it out, flattened it out. And this is like the youngest, youngest row. This is literally just pure mulch that was dropped last year. And then all of this was dropped last summer. So all of this was just dropped last summer and it hasn't been flattened out yet. So that's the reason why I'm making sure that this first row is really well fed now and keeping up with the watering, trying to really break down the mulch. So that way the mulch underneath is not robbing these plants of nitrogen and minerals and vitamins because the oak mulch, as it's breaking down, is absorbing uh, those from the from the atmosphere Those vitamins and minerals from the atmosphere. So as long as it stays really wet for Right now as the oak mulch is, is just initially breaking down Once it's full of vitamins and minerals It acts as a slow release fertilizer and it'll release those back into the soil slowly as that turns into soil Oh wow, Look at this little red stem That's beautiful Awesome. So I'm going to keep feeding them and getting them some good vitamins and minerals. I got um, about eight ounces of biostimulant in there with about a two gallon bucket. So let's get these babies fed. So, let's go ahead and get our baby some food. We have our magnificent biostimulant and a lovely little electric feeder. And we're just going to put um, 
So it, this is two gallons, right? And so we do 32 ounces of water per one ounce of biostimulant. So in this case, four ounces to the gallon, eight ounces to the two gallons, which means we're gonna use half a bottle. Here. All right? And you can of course use this little feeder, which is really nice if you want, you can just squeeze it if you're using smaller amounts. And let's go ahead and see if the hose is on, it should be on. Yeah, feed our pineapple, feed our pineapples, some agua. And let's go ahead and fill this baby up to two gallons. And let's feed this last row over here because in the last two years since I've been getting mulch, all of this has been broken down, broken down, and this last row is the least broken down. And so I can tell that the trees back there are really getting robbed of nitrogen because it's mostly just mulch. It hasn't rained yet. So it's not like it's getting any minerals and vitamins from the rain. And it looks like this last row is the one that's really kind of suffering the most, stressing out the most. It's been really, really hot. So I'm trying to keep it, keep it fed. And then after we feed this row, actually what I might do is just go ahead and pull this up because I'm gonna move, move, this, um, move this little drip line over a little bit. See this, this right here is really, really kind of getting hit hard. This right here is getting hit really hard. And then we have a couple of spots that are coming up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and put some biostimulant down on here, get some of these babies fed. And then I gotta, I don't know, I kind of feel like I should even, uh, it's super dry. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it down here and just water. <laughs> That's what you got to do sometimes. And it, and it makes sense because um, I don't really want to feed the biostimulant into dry dryness. There's a little bit of a leak, a leak there in the pipe. And this pipe usually ends up leaking a little bit because I have sand in the well. And the sand, little sand particles end up puffing holes. Look, this looks good because this mulch over here was dropped a lot sooner. I should say a lot longer ago, <laughs> you know, further, further, away. you know, more time, the more time it breaks down, the better. Let's just go ahead and turn it on. Okay. And now that it's turned on, that should begin to feed. I should see, yeah, I can start to see a little bit of a leak popping over there. It's good, at least they're getting watered. All right, now let's go ahead and just feed. And I'll probably just keep this watering on. Throughout the day, at least for the first couple hours, let's just go ahead and get these babies some food. These babies are looking real good over here. Doesn't need much. Just a little bit of biostimulation down in there, and then I'm going to mostly feed the areas that are hitting really hard. Like I can tell as I move further down here, they're really, really struggling because it's a lot of mulch down in here. So I really just want to keep these babies nice and fed, nice and moisturized to help the mulch break down faster. And so that way the mulch is also absorbing the water and not necessarily absorbing the water from the trees. That's the thing is like the mulch is still breaking down. So it's going to pull and rob from the trees. 
if the if the if the mulch is dry. So I'm gonna keep making sure that all these little babies are fed. Now what I could do too, just to kind of help fill this gap in, is I could always come back and add a little bit of soil and and plant some more seedlings, but it's just it still hasn't rained yet, and so I'm really just wanting to feed these babies that are already here because this could fill in this could still fill in really well a lot of a lot of babies passed they didn't make it through this this heat right now because it still hasn't rained in so long and it's really hot and dry right now this little patch is doing okay this must have been like a little little breakdown patch this patch is not doing so well and i'll show you in comparison to the other rows See, oh, there's the water coming, so let's go over here. I just really wanted to get at least another little bit of food on here for the day. You can see the drip line is just starting to, to come in here with some water on it. So what I might need to do is actually come back and fix this leak, although the leak is nice. It just messes up the pressure, and so the other parts of the hose don't actually fill in. But it is keeping this area really moist and wet right now. I could just cut that off. I just need to go get a little blade and cut that and fix that real quick, which I could. Uh, which I might do that. Let me just feed these babies real quick. Just kind of keeping any of these little runner grasses from coming in. And that's it. I've just been doing that getting these babies fed and they should come back. I'm wondering if I should even put in another another little batch of food. I think I might while we're here together. See these babies are looking good. There might be a little leak down in there too. Let me grab some scissors and fix this little just fill this baby back up with some more food. This nice little two-gallon feeder is really nice. It's it's convenient. I'm going to go ahead and pour out the rest of this. So about eight ounces per two gallons. I'll go ahead and use a little bit of this here. If you have a little backyard, um, pots on your balcony, on your porch, this is a really good amount just to, just to kind of get them a little bit of food. There's microorganisms in here. It's alive. It's alive. We actually put it under the under the microscope. And this these bottle this bottle is alive with moringa enzymes. Phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium. Let's slow that down. Let's go ahead and get this last little bit fed. And then we'll fix that little drip line. And I'll show you the other, the other rows. And pretty much every day now for the next week or so, I'm gonna be back to watering. I haven't watered these babies in a little while. They're looking a little stressed. And so I'll get back to watering on a regular schedule. I just didn't want to overwater them and also it just helps to harden them up a little bit just kind of keeping some of the grass from coming in these rows just a little bit of maintenance not much I just got the grass cut this little bit of food though in the mulch is going to really help keep it from trying to feed on the moringa especially in these areas right here just really want to load up with food here. I can start to see the drip line is starting to get a little wet. It's good. I'll probably just leave it on for the rest of the day here. Let it drip and feed this little dry zone. I'm 
mulch is breaking down and robbing these babies of nitrogen and minerals. And so what I'm doing here is feeding the mulch really. And the mulch is filling up with the, these minerals that's found in Moringa, as we know. And then it's gonna slow release it back into the soil in turn feeding the moringas again. Got this runner grass, just kind of creeps along the surface. It's all good. What I'm doing here eventually is getting enough plants in the system to reduce the amount of grass that's even just in this system keep it contained, feed these little babies, and um, just introducing other plants that don't need as much care and maintenance as say like fast growing grass in the summer. Okay, that's good. All right. Now let's go ahead and just cut this so you can see how to fix a little drip line. And that's it. So throughout the whole drip line, sometimes it might get a little leak. And I have these clips that came with the drip line. And so now the drip line should be pumping out a little bit more water because of that pressure. It's not losing as much pressure at the end there. You want to see the other other rows before we go? Just wanted to get a quick little feeding in. I'm going to do a little harvest. See like this row? Not as stressed and looking pretty good. Just got this area mowed back and need to come through and just get the grass re repositioned so that way it's not leading through the middle here and that's all it is really a little daily maintenance when people say that they want to grow a moringa and they want to make income from moringa i say great let me show you how i can teach you how to do these things inside the members area inside the grow moringa collective it's a teaching platform really first and foremost my main goal is really to teach and educate. Um, so that way you can decide, you know, you know, what scale you want to do this. So when someone asks me how much can I make, um, I ask them how much do they want to make? How much do you want to make from Moringa? Do you want to make $1,000 a month or $10,000 a month? Do you want to make... You know, ten thousand dollars a month—that's that's over a hundred thousand dollars a year. So, if you want to make about a hundred thousand dollars a year, then you're at about the scale that I'm at. You know, but if you just want to make about a thousand dollars a month, maybe you don't need as much. See, even as dried as is, and as much of I have, I haven't watered these babies. They're doing really well because I kept them really wet for the first month to really help break down the mulch. And I can hear a little leak over there. I should probably try to see if I can fix that. But this is looking good. That's 10,000 here. And then this row is looking pretty good. It's starting to look a little dry. So I'm going to start getting back to regular watering, bringing the Bringing the line back down through here. Looks like some grass got in here. But it's okay because as I continue to feed, like I need to feed these areas too. And get them fed. Then they'll suppress the grass underneath. That's the whole point of this was to get these babies to grow up super fast. So that way all the grass underneath doesn't come through like this. And so just helping these little babies out so that way they don't get suffocated. So 
is just a part of having a little system right now. And of course, nature is, 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 is never as predictable as we think, as much as we would like to think. You know, the seasons and now, nowadays are really going through a lot of changes. Like we had a really, really mild winter. It was a little wet. It was like a little wet winter, but it was mild. And now we're having so far a really, really dry spring. And that's usually what happens in Florida is that springs is springs are really dry. But right now here we are in the in the early parts of June and we're all all the farmers and everybody around is just starting to wait for the summer rains to start. And they will. They will start soon. I'll do a little rain dance. And I gotta get these citrus watered and there's another 10,000 here that are doing okay. And then another 10,000 here that are doing pretty good. So it's just really that last row that's really suffering badly, but I may just go ahead and come through, spend the next hour just getting all of these rows fed. I think that's really the most important part. I'm starting to weed, weed through here to open this up so to, to reveal the turmerics. And uh, I usually get out a little bit early. About from 8 to 10, I usually get out in the field in the morning. And then in the afternoon, evening, I usually get back out in the field by like 6, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So I get about four hours of work done outside in the day. And then I usually spend the rest of the day uh, working on orders, the website, and spending that time also with the members. Got some, some, uh, some invasive vining plants that got in here, like kudzu. Um, mostly just because I'm bringing in a lot of mulch from, from the street, you know, from the Florida Department of Transportation. They usually come and drop off mulch. And so sometimes they also bring other, other plants with them and even animals like ants, fire ants and things like that, that I didn't normally have here. But I'm grateful for the mulch. It was free mulch. And so I will gladly just be a part of the system and remove anything that we don't want. I just got these trees all cut back yesterday. Open that up, open that up, open this one up quite a bit as well. And uh, looks like I could come through and begin to open up a few more. But for the most part, I really just wanted to show you guys these 50,000 seedlings that are coming in really nicely here. Thanks, everybody. Peace and love. Have a great day. Have a glorious growing season. Look at these babies coming in nice. Oh, really opening, opening up. And then I'll come through probably here just now and pop some of these tops to help re-inspire it to push back down, especially right now, since the sun has sun just kind of came up and these are still really, really green right now. They don't look really stressed. I can tell that these are starting to look really stressed because they're getting real tiny and uh, probably just a lot of mulch still in this further back area of the farm. This is the youngest area, right? This is the oldest area. So as I move further and further through this little half acre plot, it um, it still needs to get broken down. I just planted these trees the other day, so I may also have to come through here and just spray a little biostimulant down in each one of these to get them fed. I mean, they are starting to come back a little bit, but I'm sure they're really hot and dry and stressed. So I'll get them watered as well. Good, the strip line's looking really nice. Just doing a little assessment on this beautiful morning. Thanks everybody for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Peace and love.